All right, guys, this video is to show you how to interact with Contact. So Contact is just a, a software plugin that we've purchased, honestly, pretty expensive, and uh, has a lot of different sounds on it. Um, one of the primary reasons that we purchased it for Sundays, um, it has some music production value as far as other sounds, but for Sundays, it's got a lot of good pianos, which are the number one thing uh, that I liked about it. Uh, it also has some really good strings and horns, uh, which could be useful in, in um, fitting really specific uh, moments of songs. So, um, but it's not the most simple to interact with, so I want to show you a video how to, how, of how to use it. Uh, again, I think the biggest place I'd, I would want you guys to dig into this is with pianos, good piano sounds and good tone and um, giving a lot of variance and detail. So um, I'll show you how to do that, and then I'll show you how to get a little bit crazy with it, with horns and stuff like that. Um, but let's dive into it. So first off, uh, you see right here, our input for our first piano is called Contact 5. That is the instrument that we're using. If you look in here, there's a long list of instruments, okay? Here's my recent list, so you see Contact, but let's say it's not in the recent list. Here's the list of default plugins that come with main stage. That's why they're listed here. If they're not listed here, then we're going to scroll down to this. Um, AU, I can't remember what it stands like for, sorry. But AU Instruments, we're going to scroll over. So in here, here's some Apple provided ones. Here's Spectrosonics, which has Omnisphere, which some of you guys have interacted with. Yes, I know Omnisphere is scary. Uh, we'll probably do another video on Omnisphere another time, but for right now, we're going to leave that alone. We're going to go to Nav Native Instruments. So guys, um, oh, also quick note, um, these, all these files are actually stored on the external hard drive. So we ran out of space on the computer. These things take up a lot of space. So that external hard drive that, you, that I have you guys plug in is where all these sounds are stored. So it does need to be plugged in for you guys to access these. So go to Native Instruments. Now, you see a couple instruments within here. Uh, Massive, Reactor 6, uh, FM8, Battery, Battery 4, Epsynth. Those are all synthesizers, different types of synthesizers get into here, um, contact is, uh, is a different deal. So, uh, but that, and that's where we're going to, where we're going to operate out of contact. You actually have access to like all of native instruments, instruments within contact. Contact is like a, a, a player, if you would, uh, something that you can select with all the different instruments from within. So contact five, and then you see all of these. So what we're going to do, if we chose stereo, that would work. We would get, uh, we'd, we'd choose an instrument and we would, um, uh, it would send out to, le to a left and right channel that would be in our first channel. Um, which, you know, this right here, this is a stereo channel. It has a left and a right. That's why you're able to pan left and pan right is because it's actually two signals, not just one. So um, that would work for you to do stereo, but we're going to be smarter. Sorry, didn't mean to steal the thunder there. We're going to be smarter than that. We're going to go to the instruments, native instruments, contact five. We're going to choose a 16 by stereo. By, by doing that, we actually save computer um, energy and space and processing power. Um, if, if we wanted to use contact more than once. So if you'll notice over here, let's scroll over here. You see how we have EX S24 three, four times, five times. Wow. So we're using that synthesizer engine five times. That means there's five instances of this running. So it's not a really efficient way to, um, to, to utilize the computer. Uh, we're running the same program five times for five different voices. Well, Contact allows us to run one instance and actually um, uh, utilize multiple sounds uh, out of this one instance. So, and I'll, and I'll show you how we're going to get fancy to do that. So, I've already set this one up right here, and that's, and I just wanted to show you how, how it does work. Um, you've noticed that I have, here's contact. Uh, over here are the, are the place where I find the instruments that contact has. It's got a lot of different instruments that I can choose from. And then over here, it shows the instruments I've selected in the ones I'm playing. And I've actually got two. If I scroll down over here, you see this instrument navigator. I can I can go to the session horns. I can go to the gentleman piano. So I've got two different instruments, and they're outputting to two different channels over here. I control the channel by making sure I'm clicked on this I right here, going to output, drop down. I'm selecting the first output, channels one and two. 
for the gentleman piano and I'm choosing the second output right here three and four for the session horns so boom now you see I have this plus down here so uh, if I do the minus that disappears and actually um, pretty sure I can delete that but if I press plus it shows back up what happens if I hit plus again I get another one five and six very cool very cool seven and eight okay I like this I like this a lot I'm gonna delete this because I don't think we need it alright um, now if I go here yeah awesome okay so right now we're just gonna run uh, channels three and four so I'm gonna delete seven and eight over here oops I did not mean to delete that one okay boom we're gonna run with two we got well, one two and three four as far as contact is concerned boom so now my horns are routed to this channel my piano is routed to this channel I have one instance of contact running and it's sending two different instruments to two separate channels so guys that's gonna get us more efficiency in the computer and keep the computer from freaking out so let me see right now and because these are, are separate channels over here, I actually still get my separate volume control over here by just going to this aux 10. Listen, I'm just going to go ahead and name this horns. All right. Then I'm going to choose my fader. I'm going to go map it to the horns volume. Boom. We're mapped. Now, the only other thing I, want, I need to look at is these sends and the output. Just like when we create a new channel, these need to be right. When we're doing, when we're creating a new channel from within contact, we need to go here to, to set these. So... I'm gonna set these. I know I'm 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 playing the horns, so actually here's a here's a cool deal. I'm gonna map these horns out the pad. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna match the pads over here. Okay, and I'm gonna send it to bus five for its outro because exit for pads. Okay, so now I've got one in one version or one instance of contact running and sending the piano to this channel the horns to this channel, then I'm routing the piano through the piano channel, the horns through the pad channel, okay? I'm going to set these up with zero to match these other pad sounds, okay? So, all right, let's see what happens when I play. You see the horns are playing, I know you can't hear them very well. Oh, you know why you can't hear them? Because my pads are down. Turn my pads up. Turn that piano. Cool, cool, cool. I'm trying to figure out why the pet, why I still can't hear it. But, um, that's fine. Mapping out, going out, but one or two. All right. So let me go down, and now I want to show you guys how to do that from scratch. So, um, we're going to scroll down here. I've got a one, I've got one instance of contact running. Okay. So the soft gentleman piano. Now, um, actually, we're going to do this all the way from scratch, okay? I'm gonna, we're going to say, what if we have, what if we was, this was on something else? We're going to start from, from the very beginning. We're going to go down, AU Instruments, Native, Contact. I'm going to choose my 16 by stereo. Okay. All right, here's my instruments, okay? So let me show you guys how to choose an instrument. Um, we're going to come down here. Say hey, let me let me take a look at the instruments we have. This one sometimes they have multiple under instruments, uh, but for the gentleman piano, there's just one. So I'm going to double click it and I'm going to choose it. Notice now here I've got my gentleman down here. I can solo it. I can mute it. Um, I'm going to mess with the gentleman here. So uh, we've got the gentleman and it only has. Oop, sorry about that. Only has one setting, but. Obviously, I could mess with all these settings to try to find something I really like, or I can click this camera. This takes me to the snapshots. This is a list of snapshots right here. Um, I can cycle through them. All right, cycle through again. Let's go to, ooh, harsh. You hear that real bright, real up front. That one's honestly probably a really good piano for, um, for some worship stuff. Okay, let's try... Uh, in the face. 
levitating. This one's going to be interesting. Lots of reverb already added onto it. Okay, loads of dynamics. Well, you won't be able to tell because I'm not playing on a real keyboard. All right, mellow. This is one I like. This one. Okay, boom. We've got our piano. It's already routed to the piano channels here. Send it to the piano bus. All right, now uh, let's 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 pick a second keyboard. Let's go pick like a Rhodes or electric piano. Um, well, what I want to do is I want to click this plus, boom, I've got my three, four channels. Let's go ahead and get them routed to the correct cha piano channels. I'm going to choose piano, just match. I'm going to match exactly the other piano channel. I don't even have to really think that hard about it. I'm just matching the one right next to it. Great. I'm going to do this, match the one right next to it. Boom. We're set up. I've got all the same sends. I'm already routed out to the same output. And we are ready to go. So now I'm going to go choose my second instrument. So let's go to Retro Machines. Let's choose a clav. So this is going to be real in the face. Um, let's go through. Let's let's just check out some snapshots. Oh no, snapshots. Okay. So this one doesn't come any snapshots. That's all right. Now, uh, everything's good except we do need to click the I, route it to our channels 3 and 4 so that it sends to a different... Oh, let's see here. Send in the output 2. Make sure... Um, another thing, a good thing to make sure inside of contact that our MIDI channel, let's just go ahead and always set them to Omni. That way we never have an issue about it receiving MIDI from anywhere. We've already routed our MIDI the right direction, so we don't need to route a second time in here. So, let's see here. There's our clap. The MIDI is what was failing. Very cool. Alright, so we've got our clap. It's in a second channel. Uh, I'm going to route my volume. Let's go ahead and name this clap. Boom. All right, now I can turn down my piano, keep my class. Mmm, doesn't that get you in the mood to worship? All right, guys. Um, so that is how we use contact to create to create multiple voices with only using one instance of contact to try to save our CPU load. So uh, if you got any questions, let me know.